this lovely session that we are about to listen to um, because I think it's very important that we all have an awareness what to do when we lose someone. Um, I think uh, you did a great job yesterday. It was lovely and I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, they are doing it again because the audio wasn't recorded. <laughs> so now, uh, um, yeah, I think you practiced yesterday, and now it's for the real thing, maybe. Um, we met first uh, in real life yesterday while following each other for years, I guess. So that was really nice. So when I heard that they were going to do the talk again, um, I just felt compelled to be their herald again. And I'm, I'm really grateful and uh, thankful uh, and looking forward to this amazing talk. So, Jelis and Jure, please give them a... Big applause. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I'm going to start this talk off with a trigger warning. We are going to mention suicide a lot. And if you are not capable of hearing, withstanding, or talking about that topic, I recommend you leave now. You've got about the next 30, 35 seconds to, um, to leave. And afterwards, we're going uh, full steam ahead. Um, meanwhile, if you or anyone you know need help, there are resources out there. So there's this big QR code which will lead to, um, to a list of the different helplines that you can reach um, internationally. Um, yeah, so know that there is help available. Furthermore, um, this talk is recorded slash streamed. Um, in theory, once the Q&A session starts, uh, the recording itself will stop, but until then, it will be um, it will be recorded in the stream. So, if you want to like give any of your input or your own personal stories, uh, please wait until during the Q and A, or even better, afterwards. You just approach us um, afterwards. You are allowed to just take pictures of this, record it, uh, just share it. Um, if you share it on Twitter, please tag us. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to give the word back to Yilis. Okay. <clears throat> So, uh, I'm really grateful um, to be here again. Um, this is like a um, thing that I really needed, this camp. So, for me, this is Woodstock for Hackers. There's like so much interaction with all the people, with all the new friends that we made. Uh, I really, really, really enjoyed it, um, but we had another one uh, a few years ago, five years ago to be uh, exact, and it was Shah, Shah 2017. And yesterday I woke up at like 3 a.m. in the night, and I realized that it was the day we went to camp just before my mother died um, and at that time my colleagues came to my house so I opened the door so I said you're way too early the funeral is just in the uh, in the afternoon he said well we want to tell you that uh, Joost has been stepped <laughs> stepped to death <laughs> in the metro in Amsterdam so we, we don't want to uh, have you heard hear it in the news so during the funeral I actually mentioned like my appreciation for him and I just realized that that's like five years ago so it is kind of hard, like, are you experiencing it? <coughs> Sorry, I don't have any, any voice anymore. But uh, I think it's important that you are able to show your feelings and you should not be shared to... Sh 
show your feelings. Uh, but it makes it harder than like an average day. Uh, I don't know anymore. Like, yeah. Are you going to like the next ones or was I? So this all started out as just something that we got more skilled than an average person, right? We are in, an, uh, in a situation where we can do stuff that the average person can't. Talking about installing an app on Windows or deleting an email from a, um, from a ma mailing list or your email server. Um, there are some people that still struggle with that. Um, we are, of course, as like a community, but also we personally have, um, have some skills that other people do not have. And um, because of that. Let, let me take it from there, sorry. Go ahead. Um, so at first you, you skill yourself, so you become like the smart nephew. You will be able to help other people. So you install like a new hard disk, upgrade your screen, uh, install like a graphics card, maybe fix something, recover hardware, and people know uh, how to find you. It's okay. Yeah, thanks. Um, so they know how to find you, and uh, you help them out with all kinds of problems. And sometimes those problems are like really odd problems. Uh, one of uh, the, the situations I had uh, a person that was like having roman romantic ideas with like the, uh, the partner sharing like a picture and that picture turned out to be like the background of the computer. And there was like the same PC that was used like for schoolwork. So you get a call. Can you help me out? We don't have to see each other. Um, make sure that, that it works. So that requires a lot of trust for calling someone in to fixing some sort of problem that you're not like familiar with, uh, you're not tech savvy. Uh, and I think that's what this story is about. So we're here to help and like we're not here to um, be your unpaid IT department. So there's like people telling you, can you install an illegal version of Windows? Uh, I don't like uh, two-factor authentication. I don't like uh, having different passwords. We're not fixing people here. So uh, we like to help, but we like to help in a different way. And this work, the work that we do, the work that we're uh, about to tell about, is work that we not applied for. It is, uh, we are not looking for that work, but that work is actually looking for us. So my first situation was a family member, a remote family member, um, that committed suicide and did not leave a note. So there was no like clear situation if the person uh, did it like consciousness, uh, did it, uh, uh, was like uh, influenced by someone else. So the, uh, the family reached out to me at that time. I was playing with computers, but I was not as uh, professional as I was now. And it turned out that person had all kinds of measures to protect his invention for others to be found. So to be able to get to the hard disk, you need to like hold a special magnet on a special place to enable it. Uh, data was like encrypted in pictures, in, uh, 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 in audio, in all kinds of ways. So I learned a lot about all kinds of different uh, methods by like Googling Stack Overflow, uh, Wikipedia, and then downloading the different tools to uh, help and do that. So if you do this work, you run into all kind of stuff. So you need to be 
careful and you need to be considerate for the people that you're, you are doing this work for. So first of all, you don't go and compromise crime scenes. So before uh, police has been there and released the scene, you don't go like uh, taking stuff apart, you don't uh, uh, touch anything. If someone is still alive, respect uh, their uh, choice. So it's not my, uh, and this, these are not the guidelines, these are just our guidelines but uh, don't tamper with the data of the living. There's like GDPR, there's AVG. Uh, we're not doing that, so we only want to help the um, relatives of people uh, uh, that actually died. Uh, be respectful and validate the relatives' desires. So it can be like really cool to find something, but if that's not what the relatives are looking for, you're look, uh, looking for the wrong thing. So manage the expectations, inform them, uh, tell them these are the options that you have. It's going to take so much time uh, to actually uh, do that. What do you want me to do first? Uh, never work on the original. Uh, make sure that you are um, forensically safe. So uh, use a uh, big hard disk uh, to be able to make a mirror and work on the mirror. Um, sometimes you need to validate that the information that you find is the correct information. Having one picture is enough to validate that it is the correct one. Don't go and browse around someone's private life um, and make sure that you are stable enough to do this work yourself. So in my current situation, uh, I would not be able to cope with this right now. So I need to have a stable mindset and uh, we are doing this to together uh, and that's both from a, a stability mindset so he can look over me and I can look over him. Uh, but as well as if you do not like have fancy Celebrite hardware and you need to like copy stuff and it's like really, really easy. You have the DD command that you run. If you have the IF and OF wrong, you destroy everything. And if someone is watching over your shoulder, uh, looking at what you type, you actually uh, prevent making unnecessary mistakes and something that is not on the screen here is that uh, we do this like on-premise so we don't take any uh, information home the discs that we use we wipe them uh, before uh, so uh, the first uh, like assignment that I did I was on location and I brought my camping equipment stayed there for a couple of days to see what I could find. Um, and to come back on the point of being stable enough, right now there is a lot of things going on. We were just in a lockdown. It's luckily already receding a bit, crossing my fingers for the monkey thing. Um, but we are in a very, very yeah, bad situation mentally. Um, I think as a whole world. Um, and I can see that in my group as well, right? So I am bisexual. I am very active within um, a bunch of very, very queer groups. Uh, trans rights are human rights, by the way. <laughs> the fact that we applaud for that shouldn't have to be nice, but thank you. <laughs> but yeah, we are, in a, we are in situations where people are being forced back into their home because of economical situations. Housing is almost unpayable with, you know, with the current measures that we as students have access to. And a lot of people have uh, get like forced back in situations where they wanted to get out of. They might be queer with religious or abusive parents. They might just not be in a safe situation at home anymore. And I noticed that within the communities I'm in, both queer communities, student communities, teen communities, there is a loss of morale and a lot of yeah negative yeah negative mindsets which i unfortunately can 100% understand 
And I sometimes experience those things myself as well. Not the whole parents thing. You guys are awesome, by the way. <laughs> but like, there are some emotions that I and many, many others struggle with. Um, and stuff like that can come very, very close. So I did a, um, a case of this where I found out that the person I was, uh, who have, had ended their life was actually in the same Discord as I was, was watching the same YouTube channels I had, had the same hobbies as I had, and it got very, very close. So be sure that when you, or if you do accept a job like this, that you are in a mental state that you could, that you can actually do this, right? Because if I got that job handed to me a few months earlier, I would not have been there. <laughs> So yeah, be careful um, about your own mental health as well. You come first, you're not a therapist, you're not some kind of magician. You can help out, but your own mental health comes first. Uh, I want to add to that, that this is a safe place. Like this is where people can be whomever they truly are. And I really value this of this community and we see that also when we go together, me dressed up funny as a unicorn to Comic-Con. That is also like a safe place, a place to escape for people. People that are trans, people that are called by uh, their dead names, by their parents. Uh, trans rights are human rights people. So I think it is really important that we are um, being really uh, kind and caring for the people in difficult situations. And I've seen the hacker spaces um, uh, become a safe haven during the COVID times uh, to shelter people that were in uh, different uh, difficult situations. So I really value this community. Yeah, it is very important to have some sort of safe space, and that could be within the comic, uh, comic Con community, like anime, that could be within the furry community, that could be within the hacker community, it could be even within your own school or your own friend groups. It's just very important to have a space like this. And I, I think it's very nice that, um, that hacker spaces are as open as an ex and as accepting as they are. Yeah. So. Uh, a couple of object, uh, objectives that we run into in the assignments that uh, uh, both you and I did and did, that I did alone is like find answers to questions like why were there other people involved uh, suicides without goodbye notes but sometimes you run into like really odd situations so there was one where there was like a CTF style uh, farewell note and then you're actually playing a game about someone's life so it is really cool to play CTF but like with this on stake it's very hard uh, recovering lost pictures being able to make a presentation a lecture for the funeral uh, removing someone's footprint, uh, being able to interact with big tech that has no use for helping you with these kind of things because yeah, there's actually uh, no commercial incentive uh, to, uh, to help out. And one of the last things that, uh, that I did uh, was help someone out to validate the story uh, because someone could have been misdiagnosed with a, a mental disorder uh, prior to a, a suicide attempt. So we do a lot of cool stuff together. I think we did like two, three hundred talks, lectures, workshops, trainings, and I uh, am surprised every time with the speed that he like chases me and uh, runs like far ahead of me so uh, when it's like father's day or when it's my birthday he actually creates ctfs for me and uh, that takes me like a couple of weeks to solve so we have a way when we are playing ctf together 
and it's like embedded in our life, document everything, make sure that you have evidence. We use OneNote as a tool, so I will be doing like the shell scripts with the, the one-liners while he is doing Python, and sometimes I win, but in most of the cases he does. But that is like the same technique that is like embedded in our lives. So uh, document the entire process, but you also need like to bring tools. So if you're going to work on data and you only have one chance, well, if you are uh, doing it forensically solid and make sure there's like chain of evidence, make sure that you, that you work on mirrors, uh, then if you cannot uh, fix it, you can always escalate to someone that is capable of doing that. So bring disks, bring different disks, bring operating systems, uh, bring tools to mirror data, uh, SATA, PATA, SCSI, whatever. So we have like a box of uh, gear that allows us to uh, do mirroring. Uh, we don't have all the fancy stuff, so we're doing it like on a pauper hosting uh, solutions, but uh, it does w work. And like all of the knowledge that we build up over the years on like different operating system, different uh, architecture, different technology that really comes to use uh, doing this work. And most of the times, it is for the technically not savvy people. So someone in the household is doing the attacks. Someone is like uh, keeping all the pictures on the disk. Uh, and another person is not able to uh, find everything because they are not used to working with computers, they don't know where the data is, so a simple grep dash isra on a specific keyword will actually be a world uh, of change for someone that actually finds whatever they need, uh, or a strings on a document, and sometimes it's like simple plugins as a grease monkey. Uh, where you can like override data. So if someone wants to remove the digital footprint, it's not just a matter of enabling a switch and everything is gone. Um, yeah, I really had a hard time uh, uh, removing the digital footprint and I scripted everything. It took me like a month uh, to uh, have all these scripts running for like unliking, unfriending, uh, removing posts, overwriting data with garbage information. It's like, yeah, stuff that you do over time. And just as in commercial work where you, have, uh, where, where you are paid for an amount of hours or an amount of days uh, being available, you have the same stuff too when you're working on this. So that first assignment that I did, the person had like over 100 hard disks. So where do you start? Yeah, obviously on the ones that are in the computer. But if you are, you are finished, are you going to work on uh, everything together? Are you looking at like the dates on the disk? Are you looking at, uh, is this a clean one or a dusty one? So, um, uh, and on the, the, the CTF one, uh, uh, stuff was uh, stored on accounts, accounts that expired, uh, services that stopped working. Um, phone numbers that were terminated, so no longer having the, the second factor. So we already talked about uh, the uh, emotional uh, part, so it's the, the personal struggles, but also like the similarities, like, uh, like you said, someone in the, in the same age, or uh, like a, a family member or someone in the same community. And yeah, sometimes you run into like really special stuff like the steganography or like the tripwires, the mechanical uh, ones. But those are just the people that are not tech savvy, but we are all IT professionals, at least I assume, and yeah, to assume is. Uh, but we try to protect ourselves. So we uh, encrypt our stuff because otherwise people will say we are crazy. So we have a DMCrypt, we have a BitLocker, we have a two-factor, uh, we use a YubiKey, we have a telephone number. But what happens if you are no longer there? Is your partner able to get to your data? Did, did you make like an understanding about that to give access uh, uh, 
to, uh, yeah, to your partner. So there yeah, are some of the results. And I think the most important one is the ease of mind for the relatives. So if a case is closed, then it's just like it ends here. And if someone that is willing to help you out and find the answers uh, is doing their best to come up with solutions, then at least you've tried. So you did everything that you could, so it's easier to give it, uh, yeah, uh, to leave it at rest. Uh, we were able to uh, 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 at last remove the digital footprint, at least the visible side. It probably is still on uh, the uh, uh, on the, the the machines themselves, but we don't long no longer see it. We were able to uh, create a slideshow for the servers, uh, uh, yeah, in time to show a proper service. We were able to recover the data of a telephone that was wiped because uh, three different tries were put in and the machine was wiped. And uh, we got the, the story validated. So I have a colleague and that colleague uh, really, really likes to travel. But yeah, that there's like certain dangers, especially when you're like going to a, a uh, yeah, a different country, like a rough country, so something can happen to you, your, your plane can uh, crash. But he's like really, really secure, and uh, I really, really uh, admire that colleague. He has like overthought everything like in such a way, like this is, this is like legit, this is solid. But what happens if he dies? What happens with his pictures? There's n n no partner to share the data and he does like share the data uh, in a distribution way a distributed way so what he did is like create a QR code gave that QR code to his parents and in case something happens to him they will call me and show the QR code so that I will be able to do the next steps required so no one is able to get in uh, unless uh, uh, unless necessary but you could also use a, um, a password vault and uh, like we are using uh, one password as a family not and sponsored can... by the way sorry not sponsored by the way not sponsored by the way oh no no not sponsored by it. no 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 you can do whatever you want uh, <laughs> use key pass or whatever but what i really like about it is like uh, you have to share a uh, shared box, so we have stuff that we can share uh, amongst uh, the family. So if they want to watch uh, Netflix, that they can, and we can change the password and it will still work. Um, and you can make like a special uh, master password for a vault that contains important stuff for when you're no longer there and store it like in a, in a secure way so uh, that, that it is uh, still uh, possible. Uh, but at least think about this, uh, think about your own situation, uh, write down your, uh, uh, and discuss your last wishes. So uh, yesterday, Dani was here and uh, shared the link, it is on Twitter, I will retweet it today again. There was like a, a last wishes uh, website that allowed you to really overthink uh, all the stuff. So, Initially, this talk was uh, set up as a technical talk for people to uh, to motivate them to work on uh, this uh, from a te technology uh, perspective. But the first time we gave it, it turned out that there were like 20% of the audience was actually affected by the, the subject. So either having a partner committing suicide, uh, children, uh, colleagues, so uh, it became quite an emotional one. But what happens if someone starts about the, the, the topic? What, what, what do you do? Uh, they make a joke. Like the, the, the thing that your gut says is like, come on, it's okay, look at the weather. No, no not look at this weather, but uh, we're all with hackers here. So it's like a really cool situation. But in fact, that is not how it works. And I will come back to that later. But also, if someone like gets a heart attack, 
are you able to handle and like we are like in a beautiful environment in a great community and there's like first aid on site but if you like camping remote are you able like to help out your partner and you don't have to learn it like if you are working in a company they are always looking for volunteers to do like the, the company uh, uh, first aid and you know how to learn how to extinguish fires and you know how to uh, try and help uh, save a life so consider that uh, um, yeah doing that as well so a friend of mine who's no longer here uh, talked about suicide a lot and I uh, had conversations with him about what was going on in his, uh, his mind. I never said uh, it is all okay. Uh, I just want to hear his story, like be sincere. Um, if you have someone that suggests that they're not, uh, their life's not valuable enough, tell them sincerely, take time, take him apart. Are you really considering committing suicide? Do you already have thoughts about it? Do you have it planned? Do you know how to do it? And that really feels counterintuitive, but by saying it will all be okay, you're actually dismissing this person's feelings. Well, if you are taking the time and uh, uh, talking about the subject, you're ever, uh, actually giving them breathing space so they're able to share their story and you will be able to like triage the situation. Like, do I need to interact now or do I need to uh, like be there for, uh, for them? So there's a training that you can, can follow. So uh, one of the cases that I did uh, in the, the call log was a number 113. So the person actually reached out to the situation to see and find if he, uh, the, the person could get help. But 113 was not operational. 113 was at that time uh, 0900 uh, 113, even though they said they were 113. And actually the parents made sure the, and fought to have it like the, 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 the shortened number. So the number on the right is all the international numbers for every country that you visit. And the, ones, the two on the left are uh, trainings that you can follow to do role play on these kind of situations. So what do you say and how does that feel for a person that is uh, uh, affected by that? It takes you just one hour of your time, but it will make a difference. It can actually save life. So consider doing these. I will share them on Twitter as well. My handle is uh, yellows underscore com. So that concludes our talk. We are like really grateful for, uh, allow, for being allowed to do this again, because we think this is a very important topic. And thank you very much for being here. We really appreciate that. Thank you.